Okay, so look at this. When I scroll down, you will be able to see this entire chip, you know, explode into its 3D parts. So let me scroll down and here it is. So this is the landing page that I built yesterday for a fun project. And I have been thinking of integrating this into my client projects as well. So if you don't know, this is known as a scrolly telling uh, animation, which uh, designers used to charge a lot but now thanks to AI I was able to build this entire thing out in like 10 minutes and uh, I originally did this inside anti-gravity but I was replicating the workflow inside Cursor as well so works on all of the IDEs does not matter but uh, just look at how cool this effect is right so as I scroll that is when you know the chip starts exploding and this is very very smooth and no this is not an AI video if it was an AI video then it would have just been you know in a loop and it would have been running so today I'm going to show you the entire process and huge shout out to this creator. I mean, I was uh, on YouTube and that is when I found this creator and he did this video, you know, how he built an award winning website. So this workflow is an inspiration from that. And uh, now let me walk you through the entire process. Okay. So like, you know, what we used to do before is we used to take uh, an AI video and then we used to integrate that into our platform, right? So the process is kind of the same, but this time we will convert the entire video into frames. So let me show you the entire process. So the the first thing is you have to generate the start frame and the end frame so you can just you know ask chat gpt for whatever visual you are looking for so in this case let me see if i can get the prompts okay so this is the prompt that i gave it i just told chat gpt that i want to generate an ai image so please give me a detailed prompt so this is what it gave me and i just put that inside uh, google whisk and i was able to generate the start frame after that i asked it for the exploded version and you will be able to see the prompt here that exploded technical diagram view of the same matte black ai processor chip and it then gave me the exploded version as well then what you can do is you can just choose the one that you like and then you have to save it onto your system as the starting frame and the ending frame so once you have that after that you have to go to google flow inside google flow what you can do is you can go into this drop down and you can choose frames to video and after this you have to drop your starting frame as well as the ending frame so let me open the project where i did this okay so i'm not able to open the project but what i exactly did like i said is once you from uh, from the drop down once you select you know frames to video you just have to upload your uh, starting start frame as well as the end frame which you downloaded from Google Whisk and then it it will just generate the video out for you so let me click on play and this is the video that it generated looks pretty cool and this was like a single prompt so really amazed with the results after that you just have to download it and it will ask you if you want to download an upscaled version and you can click on it and in just a few minutes we'll get the 1080 pixel version of this exact video once this is done what we would have done uh, before is we would have taken this entire video and then we would have you know embedded this into our hero section but that stuff is laggy and that is why what you can do is you can go to easygif.com video to uh, jpg so what you have to do is here you just have to upload that video and then you have to select the frame rate so more the number of frames more smoother the animation would be then click on convert to jpg and it will give you all of the frames and right now as i have selected 30 fps it has generated around 240 frames which is a lot of images so you can just download it as you know zip and then what you have to do is you have to take all of these images inside cursor set up a next.js project you know normally and then inside the public folder just create a folder called sequence and then you can upload all of these frames here as you will be able to see i have around 240 frames here uh, 240 images here and every image is just a progression of the previous image. once that is done i just prompted uh, you know uh, cursor with this prompt which i'll share with you uh, i'll share with you all of the prompts so you know make sure that you check out the notion file that i attach and that is it i mean with just a single prompt i was able to get this entire landing page ready for me and uh, in the beginning, I realized that I had chosen, you know, frame rate as five. So that is why the animation was not very buttery smooth. And that is why later on, when I changed it to 30, I got 240 images and then I just asked it to, you know, update it. So you will be able to see that. Yeah. So I told it that everything was working fine, uh, but previously I had 30 frames and now I have like 240 images. So I just prompted it once and it was able to generate this entire animation with me again and this time much much more smoother as before so here we go looks pretty amazing i mean designers used to charge so much money for it and now let's say you are building an mvp for like let's say 5k for a client and you, if you give them um, a hero section a landing page that looks like this i mean your client would definitely be amazed i am going to make sure that i integrate this into my client projects in the future you don't have to ship you know those boring generic ai landing pages anymore so yeah that is the workflow so just generate your keyframes in whisk connect them with Google flow, extract the frames with easy Jeff and build the scroll component inside Cursor, And that is it. So yes, guys, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.